Whew. Okay, so today I decided to do something that, I mean, a lot of people have done in the past. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of articles, a bunch of lists, a bunch of stuff. Regardless, a lot of people have tried to do this, and a lot have failed. I mean, it's, nobody's really prevailed. I mean, it's a very difficult thing to do because, you know, since the source material, the lore, and all this stuff, so whatever. I just, today I decided to take a crack at it, but, uh, yeah. What is the timeline of Mad Max? Alright, just to start things off, the first three movies are already in chronological order, so I'm going to be using that as a basis for the timeline. Essentially, I'm going to be trying to figure out where Fury Road and the game. Yes, the game, it is considered canon, at least semi-confirmed by George Miller and the developers. Whatever. But I'm going to find out where those two fit in the timeline. And also, I am not going to be uh, going by the Feral Kid theory. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to make it brief. Essentially, people think that the kid, the feral kid from Road Warrior, grew up to become a Mad Max wannabe style character in Fury Road. And a lot of the things kind of point to this, like essentially the music box, but I'm gonna... I don't really believe in that theory because it really relies on the fact that he manages to find the exact same clothes that Max had. Also, he gets the same leg injury. And not to mention, if that was him, the feral kid all grown up, why the hell is he not using the boomerang? The boomerang is an awesome weapon. And third, I am not considering the comics to be canon. I mean, look, I understand some people are going to be hating that, but th there's a lot of inconsistencies. They try to change the dates. They try to retcon the era to present day. I personally didn't like it, and it's a little weird, but whatever. That's essentially it. Also, spoiler alert. I'm not going to be ruining big parts, but there are spoilers. I mean, obviously, it's a timeline. So, just to throw that out there, let's begin. Alright, now let's see the timeline. Alright, first off, the first one's obviously the origin story of Max Rokotansky. And that is Mad Max. And that one happens around the time when he's 23 years old. Now, two to three years later, according to a lot of interviews, it's two years. But according to the back of the DVD box, three years later, Road Warrior happens. So he's about 25 or 26. Now, 15 years later, according to a quote by Miller himself... Thunderdome happens, and this would make Max about 40-ish. And this timeline is sound because Max ages accordingly. Now, here's where the theory kicks in, and I understand, but hold on. Now, I believe that the game happens right before the Road Warrior. Look, I understand that sounds crazy, but just level with me. One of the reasons is the state of the Interceptor, you know, Mad Max's car, it looks pretty damn new, and it looks pretty similar to its state in Mad Max 1 and Road Warrior. Also, the wasteland is still very populated. Many of the settlements exist. Look, I understand the setting is all destroyed because, you know, the bombs fell, but a lot of the things still are the same. There's still a lot of gangs, a lot of... Th Essentially, Mad Max 1 was already a pretty apocalyptic, anarchy-filled world, and this is just pretty much the same thing, but with everything just destroyed. And the last thing to consider is the amount of gas that's in Mad Max the game. I mean, in Road Warrior, he has to soak up gas from a nearby wreck. Look, I understand, playing the game, gas was pretty scarce, but it wasn't as scarce as it was in the movies. So, I see it in a sense that it's like, there's still enough gas to go around, but it's slowly and slowly becoming more and more rare. So, in the game, I understand as a gameplay mechanic, I get it, but there is still a lot of gas compared to how it, you know, it's displayed in the movies. Now, one of the big things that goes against this is Chum Bucket. At one point, he does say, oh, I know who you are. You're the, you're that, like the, like he's talking about him, like he knows him, like the legend, the Mad Max. But I have a counter to this. Um, he's already kind of a legend in Mad Max 1, before the whole, the bombs fell, before everything is an anarchy. He's already a well-known cop that's been shown on television as being the guy who goes down to chase down criminals. Hell, even in Mad Max 1, the very first guy he takes down starts to cry. Starts to literally cry when he notices that Mad Max is coming after him. Now, one of the lines in the game, he states that he has no idea what a church is. As well as he puts a, a pretty much a big faith in cars. 
And that seems a little crazy, you know, only being like two to three years later after, you know, like the bombs fell or, you know, society. But here's the thing. Remember in Mad Max 1, society is already falling apart. And not to mention, the character is also somewhat of an idiot savant. So him not knowing is not that unbelievable. Also, the fact is that his body is heavily mutated, possibly due to um, the radiation, the fresh radiation from the bombs just barely falling. Now, the next in the timeline is Road Warrior. And this fits perfectly, mostly because of one and one key detail. In this film, the Interceptor is blown up. I mean, de-fucking-stroyed. All that's left is a bunch of scrap. So yeah, with the Interceptor destroyed, how can it come back in Fury Road? Well, it does, and it doesn't. In Road Warrior, the leader of the settlement, Papagallos, has his own vehicle named the Lone Wolf. After he dies in the huge climax of the film, we see the surviving members of the settlement driving away from Max, and beside him is the Lone Wolf. My theory is he managed to convert the Lone Wolf into the Interceptor we see in Fury Road. Because unlike previous installments, the Interceptor in Fury Road is rusted, and it looks like it was really just hobbled together by a bunch of old parts of like different cars. It's no longer black like it was in Mad Max 1, the game, and in Road Warrior. Now next up is Fury Road, and this again just fits perfectly in the timeline. Uh, first off, it starts off with him being hunted down. And the group of scavengers that are hunting him down are revealed to be under the rule of Immortan Joe. Why is he being hunted? Because Scrotus, the main villain in the game, is the original son of Joe. One of his children before the fall of humanity. This again leads to the Interceptor being decommissioned and ultimately destroyed when it gets sandwiched between the war rig and the people eaters limousine in a fiery explosion. On top of this, at the end of Fury Road, we see Max walk away without his fabled car. He walks into the wasteland with just the bag on his back, thus possibly showing a true end for the Interceptor. And now next, and ultimately last, Beyond Thunderdome fits perfectly at the end of the whole timeline. Because, by this point in time, there is no sign yet mention of the Interceptor, and in this film, Mad Max loses his jacket, a jacket that he has in every single, well, part of the series prior. So yeah, that's essentially the whole timeline, and look, I understand there are things that go against this, and one of the main things is actually something in Fury Road. At the beginning of Fury Road, Max is given a tattoo with a bunch of info about his body, but the thing I want to focus on is Day 12045. Now, this is not clearly visible in the movie, but it is in the concept art. Now, normally I would disregard this because it's concept art. I mean, personally, whatever. And in the film, yeah, it's kind of in the film, but you can't really read it. I mean, you look at it, it's just gibberish. You can't really see it. It's unclear. But I understand some people are going to be using this as evidence. So, let's see if I can try to counter this. First off, let's figure out what these actually mean. Is it actually day 12,045? Or is it like a calendar, January 20th in the year 45? If it's the first one, 33 years have passed since what? The fall of what? Mankind? That makes absolutely no sense considering how old Max is. Also, 45 makes even less sense in that regard. But what if the date is not actually addressing, you know, the fall of mankind? What if it's addressing something else? Like, say, the beginning of the war? I mean, in Mad Max 1, war is already happening. That's why anarchy in the whole world is being filled with, like, you know, the whole world is just falling apart. So maybe it could be that, but also, according to the, uh, or regarding the second one, which is, you know, the date, like calendar, what if it's something that has to do with, like, Immortan Joe's, like, life himself? I mean, he is somewhat like a religious figure amongst all the war boys, and, I mean, look at Western society, or Western civilization. Our own calendar is the basis, or is based off of, a religious figure, Jesus, B.C. and A.D. Even though you're not religious, we still follow it. Now, regardless of that, um, there is another thing that really, really just tarnishes, at least somewhat tarnishes the theory. At least if you if you take it out of context. Regardless, it's George Miller himself. And this is a quote from him. If you put a gun to my head, I'd say after Thunderdome. And yes, he is talking about Fury Road. So there goes that whole theory of me thinking that Fury Road is right before Thunderdome. Nope, not a chance in hell. Well, it would be shot to hell if he didn't say this, this exact quote, right after. 
but it's very loose. I can't even work out the chronology of the first, second, and third, let alone the fourth 30 years later. So yeah, obviously this doesn't make any sense because Max does look a lot younger than he did in Thunderdome, and how could it be after? But I think I might have found a way for his comment to make sense, while at the same time my theory making sense. Um, the plot or the story of Fury Road is exactly that. It's a story. A legend passed on from generation to generation. He does not look the same because nobody remembers exactly what he looks like. This explains why also there's little to no dialogue because um, usually when you're telling a story around a campfire, there's not that much dialogue in said story. Also, this is also a great way of showing how exaggerated the story is. Like, for example, Fury Road is possibly one of the most craziest, just craziest fucking movies out there. And it's an exaggeration. It's a fairy tale you tell around the campfire. Did it actually happen? I'm sure it did, but not exactly how it's told. I mean, come on. A guitarist with a flamethrower guitar? Now, essentially that's all the evidence that I have. I mean, I understand there's a bunch of small little details, little tidbits here and there, but those are the big points that lead me to believe that this whole timeline makes sense. Look, I understand that this timeline is not the definitive one. I'm not saying this is the end-all, be-all one. Everyone could have a different one. I'm just saying this one makes the most sense to me. And if you guys have some, uh, you know, different timelines, I love to hear them. But regardless, that's the way I see it. Just bottom line, so here's the way I like to see it. In the beginning, it's Mad Max, then the game, then Road Warrior, then the events of Fury Road, Beyond Thunderdome, and the end is the retelling, the movie we watched, the retelling of Fury Road. That's the way I see the timeline of Mad Max being. Well, that's the video. And uh, I know it's gonna be a new one coming out. It's gonna be Mad Max The Wasteland, also gonna star Tom Hardy, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the exact same thing. It's not gonna be an actual, you know, chronological, you know, connection to the other ones. Just, it's gonna be all different, blah, blah, blah. Regardless, these are just cool ways to think about it. I mean, I understand that the, you know, the series is never meant to have like an actual chronological, you know, timeline, but could there be an actual one? And is there a possibility that I might have gotten close or I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out this stuff. And again, does it really matter? Of course not, it's a movie, but it's just cool to see, like, you know, just watching a new movie with perspective, like, oh, like before the events of this happened, blah, blah, blah. Regardless of that, what do you guys think of the, the timeline? Uh, if you guys loved it, give it a thumbs up. If you guys hated it, I guess that's like it. And I guess just give me a comment why you hated it. If you want to throw a rock at my head, probably don't do that because if you throw a rock at me in this trajectory, you're going to probably hit your computer screen. And you're not, not going to have a good time. Regardless of that, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. <sighs> and I'll see you guys later.